Why the U.S. Can't Be Socialist Like Sweden. Hi, I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian Economist. Well, wel welcome to today's program where we study this idea about socialism and capitalism. There's five reasons why the U.S. can't be socialist like Sweden, and I'll unpack them for you in just a minute. But we start with a citation from a really good thinker and speaker named Lawrence Reed, and he has a little book called No, Jesus Wasn't a Socialist. And this subtitle says, Christian charity, being voluntary and heartfelt, is utterly distinct from the compulsory, impersonal mandates of the state. End quote from Lawrence Reed. He has a good website too, fee.org. Lawrence Reed, and he has a little book called Jesus Was Not a Socialist. I've heard him speak a couple of times. He's really a smart guy and a good has a good way of uh, integrating faith and economics. So let's get to our five reasons why the U.S. can't be socialist like Sweden. Well, number one, Sweden is not socialist. Yes, were you listening carefully? Sweden is not socialist. Look, their income tax system is less progressive than ours. The United States has the most progressive income tax system in the world, meaning People in the middle and the bottom of the income brackets in Sweden pay much higher tax than the U.S., and they do in Germany also. As a matter of fact, in every country in the world, they have a less progressive system than we do. So that usually is a mark of socialism, right, that you have higher taxes at higher brackets. No, nobody's more socialist in that regard than the United States. So Sweden is less socialist than we are. Here's a surprise. Sweden has no minimum wage. None. You are free to work for any wage that you agree with, and the employer is free to hire you at any wage. Well, we call this the equilibrium wage in economics. And who gets to decide that? Everybody votes. I've said this in the classroom many times. The equilibrium wage, you mean where those, those supplying labor and those demanding labor, where they agree everybody gets to vote? What is more free and democratic than that? We have a minimum wage in the United States. Sweden has no minimum wage. Well, let's look at school vouchers. Wouldn't you think in a socialist environment, everybody, everyone would be forced to attend these really great public schools? Look, in Sweden, every student is given the opportunity to have a school voucher to go to the private school of their choice. That's not true in the United States. The Obama administration lobbied way against the ability of people to have school vouchers and go to their own school. They're more capitalist than we are in that regard. Corporate tax. Well, our corporate taxes were about the same as theirs until Trump lowered them. I'm recording this early in December of 2020 when the Biden administration is coming in and they're threatening to raise the taxes so they'd be back at the level of Sweden. Do you realize in the last three and a half years, the U.S. corporate tax level has been lower than Sweden's? So, you know, yeah, and we were the same as them at one point. So if we go back, we'll be as socialist as they were. The only reason we have been more capitalist than them over the last three and a half years is because Trump lowered the corporate tax level. If Biden gets his way and they go back, the corporate taxes go back up, We'll have the same level. We're the same level of socialism. Look, here's a few good quotes from a guy named Otto Brans Peterson. He's a Danish economist, and he's talking about Denmark, not Sweden here. And we're lumping together to some extent these Scandinavian countries, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, right? That was Sweden for a while, and that's in, my top, in the uh, title of my topic today. But here's some quotes from Otto Brans Peterson, a Danish economist speaking on PragerU video. Uh, he said, essentially... Denmark has high taxes and high benefits, but that's all. Other than that, they're a relatively capitalist country. They are, as he points out, the third easiest country in the world to open a business. That's not socialist. There's no minimum wage in Denmark, like there's none in Sweden. And he points out, the country became wealthy after World War II. It had its highest, its highest economic growth in the 1950s when they were more capitalist. As they become more socialist and the welfare state took over in the 60s, they have become poorer. And this really, I'm still on point one of my five points, but the summary today is going to be, 
There's no purely free market capitalist society. There's no purely socialist society. All of us are left to right of one another, and individual countries move back and forth, as the U.S. did. We generally became more free market capitalists under Trump. We will become more socialist under President-elect Biden, but nobody's totally at one end or the other. So when you say it's a socialist or a free market capitalist country, that needs definition. And we talk about this a lot in the classroom, how countries move back and forth, left to right. And I'm going to give you a good measure of that in a little bit here. So we're still on Denmark. Well, a lot of their social security, which has happened through the state, is becoming privatized, according to Otto Bronze Peterson. And healthcare is moving from public to private. They have a public and a private mix, just like we do in the United States. In Denmark, 20% of the students go to private schools. That's not a socialist economy. Uh, they pay about 50% in taxes on average. We pay much less than that in the U.S. But they earn 15% less than Americans, according to Otto Bronze Peterson. Okay, you want to measure? Here's a good one. So what is a free market capitalist country and what is a socialist country? One of the best measures is called the Index of Economic Freedom. This is probably the third or fourth time I've referred to that in podcasts, and I will continue to do so. Anytime you look at international differences between countries, the Index of Economic Freedom done by the Heritage.org, they, they list 180 countries from economically free to economically depressed. This is a good substitute for free market capitalism and socialism. Well, we're talking about the Scandinavian countries, right? Denmark is number eight. Denmark is the eighth freest economic country in the world. Sweden is 22, Norway is 28, and that's out of 180. And of course, you want to know, where's the United States? We're 17. So we're right in the middle there. According to the Index of Economic Freedom, we have less economic freedom than Denmark, just a little bit more than Norway and Sweden, but we're all grouped together. They're pretty close. And income, we make about the same. Americans make, by the family, 63,000. Uh, people in Denmark make 58,000. Norway, 65,000. Sweden, 52. But actually, if you go back to my title, Why the U.S. Can't Be Socialist Like Sweden, it is very clear that the more free market capitalist a country is, the richer it is. The more socialist it is, the poorer it is. So the U.S., we make an average per family of 63,000, as I'm recording this in December of 2020. We would be higher if we had greater economic freedom. We would be lower if we had less. It, this is very clear. It's not even worth arguing that free market capitalist policies make a country richer. Socialist policies make it poorer. And so Sweden at 52, that's 52,000 per family. In the U.S. we make 63. That's like 18% difference. I mean, so you really want to make 18% less to be like Sweden? Not a good thing to do. I said there's five reasons. I'm only on number two. And, and this, this really is an important one. It's size. It's size. Denmark is 5 million. Norway is 5 million. Sweden is 10 million. The United States is 330 million people. Maybe I should repeat that. Yeah. The population of Denmark is 5 million. The population of Norway is 5 million. The population of Sweden is 10 million. The population of the United States is 330 million. In class, some, at least once a semester, I'll put up the list of you know the average family incomes in each country. And all those above the United States are really, really small. And then you get the United States with 330 million people, families making an average of 63,000. This is just amazing. This has never happened in the history of mankind. You can make a small country rich. How do you make a country of 330 million people rich? That's what the United States has done. Why? Mostly because our free market capitalist uh, policies. So you can make a small country rich, like Sweden or Denmark or Norway. Making America rich? That is an amazing thing. You know, I've got an interesting view of this. I read a book recently called Strong Towns by Charles Marone. I was considering doing some economic development work in my own small town here and looked online for books, and I found this book called Strong Towns, and I read it. Toward the end, he has a, a chapter is uh, titled about his political beliefs, and I said, well, I don't care what you believe, but I read it, and it was really fascinating. This guy makes this fascinating point. 
And now I'll tell you from my point of view, but using his concepts, right? So my wife's name is Ginger. Dave and Ginger together are purely socialist. Her money is my money. My money is her money. From each according to his need, to each according, I'm sorry, I said it backwards. <laughs> from each according to his ability, to each according to his need, between the two of us, right? That's the smallest circle. Now think of a circle larger. We have three children and seven grandchildren. We are somewhat socialist with them, but not as much. They don't have access to our money. We will help them when we can, but we are less socialist with them. And this guy makes the point, Charles Marone in his, his book, Strong Towns, by the time you get to the city, you're still pretty close, aren't you? So maybe you should be relatively socialist with your city. Why? Because there's only a few thousand people there and you can control it. I mean, we live in a city of 36,000, right? So I pass City Hall every day. I know every city council member. I know the mayor. I know a lot of the staff. I can control what happens. So think about it. Maybe I wouldn't be so concerned if I had high taxes in my city because I would be able to control the expenditures of them, wouldn't they? And I'd be able to watch it really close, wouldn't I? But by the time these circles got to the county and then the state and then the United States, I'd become more capitalist, wouldn't I? Isn't that an interesting way to think about it? So at the city level, I'm more socialist, meaning I'm okay with higher taxes because I'm going to benefit from them and I can watch the expenditure of the money. But at the national level, I'm pretty much a hardcore capitalist. Marone makes a pretty good point, and I think he's right about that. I'm, point, I'm on point number two of my discussion with you here about why the U.S. can't be socialist like Sweden. Sweden has five million people. You realize that's less than North Texas. If you take the 20 counties in North Texas where I live, the population is seven million. We are bigger than Denmark. We are bigger than Norway. So you can see why if you have a really small country, maybe you don't mind big taxes because you can watch how they're spent. Much like I can watch how they're spent in my community. That's a good point. So size is my point number two. Size number three is homogeneity. Uh, the Danes, this is the most clear with them. The Danes are Danes and other people are not. They are a very homogenous society. They know each other very well. Many of them have similar names. Again, because there's only five million of them. They have a very close culture, very homogenous. And so they don't have disparate parts of their organization like we have in the United States. The United States is a mixing bowl, isn't it? We have many different cultures and people with many different ideas about how they should live their lives. In a very heterogeneous society like the United States, you need more hardcore capitalism, free market capitalism. In a very small and homogenous place like Denmark or Norway or Sweden, you can get away with being more socialist. As a matter of fact, Sweden is now suffering from this. Um, they, uh, the book Discrimination, Discrimination and Disparities by Thomas Sowell pointed out, I believe they've taken in like 10% of their population, no, 14, I'm sorry, 14% of their population is recent immigrants, and they make up half of the prison population. Got it? As you get more homogeneous, it's harder to be socialist. As you are more homogeneous, it is easier to be socialist. And this is the experiment we're watching playing out in Sweden right now. The other point about this size is even though they're 5 million, 5 million, and 10 million, they may gain some advantages from economies of scale in trade by being a part of the European Union. Now, Norway is not, but Denmark and Sweden are a part of the European Union. So that's size homogeneity. Um, this one I'll have to cover quickly. It probably requires a podcast on all its own. Uh, number four, their drugs are cheaper than ours. It, it is very well known in the drug industry that drugs are developed and tested in America and because of the copyright and patent system in America. The United States pays a higher fee for those drugs and pays off the R&D cost. Therefore, the drug companies sell these drugs in other countries like Denmark, Denmark Norway, and Sweden at the, at the variable cost without the fixed cost of development. So essentially the U.S. pays for the development cost and their drugs are cheaper. Yeah. The fifth one is, uh, I don't have time to explain this well, I'll do it quickly. The fifth reason why we can't be like Sweden. 
religion or the absence thereof. This is called opportunity cost in economics. So think about your family. Since you're listening to this, you probably are a church attender. And so if you attend church, you spend some resources on that church, don't you? You give it some money, you give it some time. What if you didn't do that? What would you do with that time and money? Well, again, I don't have time to unpack the whole point, but in Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, they spend less time and effort in their church. And essentially, the country has become their church to a great extent. Therefore, they are able to watch their country more closely and the expenditures that are made so that they can get away with a relatively more socialist environment than we can in the United States. Yeah, why the U.S. can't be socialist like Sweden? Well, in conclusion... Hillsdale President Dr. Larry Arnn said recently, there are only two ways to influence others, coercion or talking, end quote. In economics, we call that free market capitalism, which is talking. You're trying to convince somebody to buy. And coercion is the socialism that he talked about. Yeah. Last quote. Whole Foods CEO John Mack, he's quoted in the Wall Street Journal today. He characterized socialism as trickle-up poverty, while defending capitalism as, quote, the greatest thing humanity's ever done, end quote. Whole Foods CEO John Mackey, December 2nd, Wall Street Journal, capitalism is the greatest thing humanity's ever done. Let's do more of it. I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian economist, where our slogan is, fear God, tell the truth, earn a profit. See you next time.